Alright guys, so today we're going to be showing you a step-by-step -step build along video for our 500 by 500 Sphinx. As you can see this machine is awesome. It's a little beast. It's great for milling out any type of hard material. As you can see this configuration includes our reduction belt system. It also includes a rigid design for our Y axis. We have wheels on the outside as well as in the inner tracks. So now I'm gonna be going over the specs of this machine. All right, so some of the cool aspects of this machine is our cutting area, our Y axis at 325 millimeters or 12 and a half inches. That's actually pretty significant for this size machine. We also have our X axis at 333 millimeters or 13 inches, perfect for one foot material. We also have a workable depth of 64.5 millimeters or two and a half inches. And our Z travel is also at 85 millimeters or three and a quarter inches. So our spoiler board is also at 19 millimeters or three and a quarter inches, which is perfect for our mounting configuration underneath with our self tapping screws. So this machine is awesome. Definitely a good starter for you guys. And I can't wait to go ahead and start this build along video. All right, guys, moving to the first step here, we are going to be assembling our base for our 500 by 500 Sphinx. In this step, we're going to need our 20 by 60 rails at 500 millimeters. We're also going to need our 20 by 80 rails at 380 millimeters. And we're also going to need 26 of our M5 T nuts, 26 of our 8 millimeter screws, 6 of our black angle corner connectors, and 8 of our cast corner connectors. In addition to that, we're going to need our M5 ball driver, a magnetized screwdriver, and our tape measure. Alright, so to start off, we're going to go ahead and insert our M5 T nuts to our rails. Starting with our 20 by 60, we are going to insert six onto one side. So go ahead and grab your rail, go ahead and tilt it to one side, and insert six of your T nuts. So now that we have six of our T nuts in our 20 by 60 rail, we're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now. Grab your additional 20 by 60 rail. And once again, we are going to insert our T nuts on this top track here. A total of six of our T nuts. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. All right, now that we have our additional six in our 20 by 60 rail, go ahead and put this to the side. And these two pieces here are going to be our ends. Our 20 by 80s are going to run vertical. We are going to have these horizontal. So this will complete our frame. So go ahead and grab one of your 20 by 80 rails. And we're going to go ahead and insert two of our T-nuts on this track here. And then we're going to insert two on the opposite track. So go ahead and insert two onto this track. And we'll move on to the opposite side, guys. All right, I'll flip it over and go ahead and insert two more. Alright, perfect. So this is going to be our center piece. So we have two on each side for each end of our 20 by 80. So our corner brackets are going to attach to our 20 by 60 rails. And we're going to work on our two end pieces. Now if this is going to be a little bit different, instead of having two on each side, we're going to have three on one side as part of the configuration of building up our C-beam for our Y-axis. So let's go ahead and put three of our T-nuts on the right side of this 20 by 80 rail. And then two on to the opposite side. All right, now this will be for our right side, since we have three on our right side here in the slot. So let's go ahead and put this to the side, just remembering that this will be for our right side of the base mounting configuration. So now moving on to our last piece of 20 by 80 rail, we're going to insert three of our M5 T-nuts on one side. All right, now rotate it and insert two of your M5 T-nuts on the opposite side. All right, perfect. So this will be for our left side, again, because two of our T-nuts are here on this right slot and the three T-nuts are on the left side. All right, so go ahead and spread these T-nuts out a little bit. Just makes it a little bit easier when we start building this. And let's go ahead and grab our 20 by 60 rails and place them in the pattern that we're going to build this with. So I'm going to lay this piece horizontally with my T-nuts facing the 20 by 80 rail. And the same with the opposite piece here. I'm going to place in front with the T-nuts facing the 20 by 80 rail. As you can see here, this is for my left side. So I'm going to go ahead and place that. Taking my middle piece here because I have two T-nuts on each side. Go ahead and place that in the middle. And then our last piece here for the right side. 
three on the right slot here. All right, so as you can see here, this is somewhat like a rough draft of what's going to be mounting to each rail. So we're going to go ahead and place our T-nuts accordingly. So go ahead and grab your ball driver here, and we're going to manipulate our T-nuts into place. So each one is going to receive two of our T-nuts. So on each end of the 20 by 80 rail, we're going to push a T-nut right to the corner. All right, so we have our 20 by 60 rail here in place. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing to our opposite rail here. So once again, we're just gonna go ahead and manipulate these T-nuts into place here. So now before we start mounting, we're going to go ahead and take a measurement to see where exactly we are going to place our center beam here just to make sure that our system is square. Now the 20 by 60 rail is at 500 millimeters, so we are going to take half of that. So 25 is going to be the placement of our 20 by 80 rail here in the center. So as you can see, I'm simply aligning my 25 to the center of this rail here in the middle of the 20 by 80. So that will be our center placement. So now that you have that finished up, we're going to go ahead and mount our corner connectors to our 20 by 80 rails here. So we have two on each side of our center beam. We are going to push one to each end and we're going to go ahead and take our cast corner connector and an eight millimeter screw and go ahead and lock that into place. All right, now we're going to continue the same process for this rail on each side, all with our cast corners. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, perfect. So now we have our cast corners connected to our 20 by 80 rail here. We're going to go ahead and align it with our T-nuts, making sure that this is in place with the center of our 20 by 60 rail. So once again, if you want to go ahead and measure that and align it, if you need to, you can go ahead and make a point of reference to that 25, but it's simple enough to align it. So we're going to go ahead and keep that still and go ahead and screw those into place here on this 20 by 80 rail. All right, we have one locked into place. We're going to go ahead and do the opposite end. If need be, use your magnetized screwdriver to manipulate the T-nut. All right, so we have this side mounted to our 20 by 60 rail. We're going to do the same to our opposite end. So if you want to go ahead and rotate the system here. Once again, we're going to go ahead and measure to make sure that we are square. Perfect at 25. Taking your magnetized screwdriver, we're going to go ahead and move these T-nuts into place. And go ahead and mount that with an 8mm screw. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and do the opposite side here. Alright, very nice. So as you can see, it's starting to come together. We're going to have our two 20 by 80 rails here that we're going to mount next. But this is going to be a solid little base frame here, guys. It's really starting to look sharp. So let's go ahead and move on to our next uh, 20 by 80 rails here. Making sure that our three M5 T-nuts are on the right side for our right side of the base assembly. And our two is on the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and move these T-nuts as well as on the opposite end here, just to make it a little easier for myself when I mount my cast corners. So for the inside here, we're going to go ahead and mount our cast corners, but on the right side, we are going to use our black angle corner connectors. It just looks better, more uniform with the machine itself. We have black plates, so it really looks sharp. So we're going to go ahead and take our cast corners and mount them to this left rail here. Go ahead and adjust your T-nuts if need be. Grab one of your cast corner connectors and let's go ahead and mount that to our 20 by 80 rail here. And the same with the top portion of the rail. Alright, very nice. So let's go ahead and rotate this 20 by 80 rail here. We're going to go ahead and assemble our black angle corner connectors on this right side. So once again, let's go ahead and adjust the T-nuts. This center T-nut here will be for mounting to our Y-axis. So we'll let that float for now and take a measurement to make sure that it's centered. But the other two T-nuts can be placed on the end of the rail. So let's go ahead and mount our black angle corner connectors to it. 
All right, so the center one's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be mounting to our 500C beam for our Y axis. It needs to be upright in order to latch on to one of the rails. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this black angle corner connector accordingly. So just kind of center that and we'll go ahead and take a measurement. So the center point should be at 190 millimeters. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust our black angle quarter connector to that point. So now let's go ahead and connect this to the rest of our base here. All right, now that we have it in place, let's go ahead and grab one of our eight millimeter screws and mount this to the frame. Starting with our furthest end, make sure it's flush against the rail and tighten that down. And we'll move to the opposite end here. Once again, an eight millimeter screw. Go ahead and tighten that down. All right, perfect. So we're gonna follow the same process to mount our cast corners. So go ahead and get that done, guys. Once you get those cast corners in place, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our left side of the base assembly. So once again, we're gonna check uh, each one of our slots for our T-nuts. Two on the right side are gonna be facing inward towards the machine, and our three are gonna be facing outward. So let's go ahead and grab two of our cast corner brackets here, and we're gonna mount those to the inside. So once again, let's go ahead and adjust those T-nuts. Mount your cast corner. All right, perfect, so go ahead and move your other T-nut, and let's fasten down our additional bracket. All right, perfect. So go ahead and rotate your rail around, and like we did with our additional rail, we're gonna go ahead and add our black corner connectors. So we have three of our T-nuts. One will be placed on each end, leaving our middle T-nut floating for now. And let's go ahead and attach our black angle corner connectors. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set up our other black angle corner connector. And once we do this, we wanna make sure that we have it in our midpoint. So just like our last rail, it's going to be placed at 190 millimeters. So if you need to make a point of reference, go ahead and do so, or you can just measure it to that point and assemble your black angle corner connector. So once again, the black angle corner connector should be upright, so it latches to the C-beam. So let's go ahead and mount this in place. So let's go ahead and lay our 20 by 80 rail in between our base frame here. All right, so once you have your rail in place here, we're gonna go ahead and attach our corner connectors to the frame. So starting with this end, we're gonna go ahead and fasten that down. All right, and let's move on to the next one here. Go ahead and fasten that down. Now we're gonna go ahead and fasten down our cast corner connectors. So let's go ahead and do that with our additional two eight millimeter screws. All right, so now that we have our base assembly together, it looks great. We have all of our corner connectors in place. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our spoiler board configuration. So we're gonna be placing our single L brackets into our rails here so we can mount our spoiler board from underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our base assembly. We're gonna need 12 of our eight millimeter screws, 12 of our drop-in T-nuts, 12 of our single L brackets, our ball driver, and measuring tape. So to start off with this assembly, we're gonna go ahead and grab our single L bracket. Now notice that the corner here is closer to one of the hole spacings. That is the one that we're gonna latch onto our rail. The opposite end will attach to our spoiler board. So go ahead and grab an eight millimeter screw and one of your drop-in T-nuts and go ahead and start threading that in place. It just makes for an easier mounting option versus trying to place the drop antenna into the track and then trying to attach your eight millimeter screw. So let's go ahead and place two in between our two 20 by 80 rails here, one here, and then on the opposite ends. And then in addition to that, we are going to mount our additional L brackets. So let's go ahead and get started on this pocket here. Go ahead and place that right into the middle here. You can take a measurement if you like, but you can pretty much eyeball this one right into the center. All right, so we got that nice and tight. Perfect, so let's go ahead and do our additional pockets.
All right, now that we have our single L brackets in place, we're going to go ahead and work on our middle sections here for these 20 by 80 beams. So go ahead and grab your additional single L brackets. And we're going to place two on the left side of our machine here. So it'll be on the right side of our 20 by 80 rail. We're also going to do two on our left side of the track of our right 20 by 80 rail and then two on both sides of our center 20 by 80 rail. So go ahead and assemble your 8 millimeter screw with your drop in T-nut and we're going to go ahead and start that assembly process. Let's go ahead and grab your measuring tape here and we're going to measure out three and a half inches to our 20 by 80 rail here and we're going to measure on the opposite side as well and this will be our placement for our single L brackets. So if you need to, go ahead and make a point of reference and we'll go ahead and start mounting our single L brackets here. Alright, so now let's go ahead and work on our left and right rails. So go ahead and follow the steps that I showed you before. Single L bracket with the 8mm screw and drop in T-nut and we'll go ahead and place those at 3.5 inches. All right, perfect. Now that we have our single L brackets in place here on our front side of the machine, we're going to go ahead and rotate this around. So once again, at about three and a half inches, we're going to measure out and mount our single L bracket into that place. Alright, perfect. So that looks great guys. If you notice that our single L brackets here are all flush to the rail, you want that for every single one. So if you have one that's cockeyed or tilted, you can just take your ball driver here and adjust it like so. So go ahead and check all of these and make sure that they are flush against the rail. That's important for our mounting configuration for our spoiler board. So once you have that finished, as you can see this assembly is coming along nicely. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step. Alright, moving on to the next step here guys. We are going to be assembling our Y-axis C-beams to our base assembly. So as you can see here we're going to need two of our 500 millimeter C-beam as well as two of our 8 millimeter screws and two of our M5 T-nuts along with your ball driver. So in this process here we're going to go ahead and grab one of our 500 C-beams and go ahead and get an idea of where the placement is going to be on our base assembly. So with the C-track actually facing outward for our plate on our Y-axis to run through, we want to make sure that our black angle corner connector can attach to the C-beam. So as you can see, this track here, which would be our first on the actual C here, is where we're going to place our T-nut. So let's go ahead and grab one of our M5 T-nuts, place it within the track here, and we'll go ahead and put this to the side. Now the same with our opposite end. This will also be for the Y-axis with the C facing outward we want it to attach to our black angle corner connector here so that's going to indicate that we need to put our t-nut into this track here so let's go ahead and grab our m5 t-nut place it into the track and let's go ahead and set this one onto our assembly now that we have an idea of where our y-axis is going to be placed on our base assembly we need to access underneath in order to mount this black angle corner connector to our c-beam so what i'm going to do is go ahead and slide the machine forward and this will give us access to the bottom lip of the C-beam. So making sure that it's square on both sides. You don't want any, any of the C-beam hanging over. You want to make sure that this whole assembly is square. It's very important for our machine to be accurate. So now let's go ahead and mount that black angle corner connector to our C-beam. If need be, you can adjust your T-nut so that it is in place with your black angle corner connector. And you can go ahead and fasten that into place. Alright, once you have that tight, go ahead and gently turn the machine to the opposite side. Once again, we're going to hang it over slightly so we can make sure that we are able to access the bottom of our C-beam here. So let's go ahead and align our T-nut so it's easier to mount to our black angle corner connector. 
Making sure that the C-beam is aligned to our base assembly. Let's go ahead and mount that into place, guys. All right, perfect. Now that we got this nice and tight and in place, as you can see, our assembly thus far is is looking great guys so let's go ahead and move on to our next step alright moving forward here guys on this step we're going to be assembling our mini extreme wheels so as you can see here we need uh, one of our mini wheel shells as well as two of our mini V bearings and one of our mini V shims so let's go ahead and start the assembly process here you're going to pop one bearing into the front side of the shell add your mini V shim here in the middle and pop your additional bearing on the other side just like so so as you can see it's in place this wheel is assembled so let's go ahead and assemble the rest of our 23 wheels so this will be for our mini v wheels here and let's get that done guys and we'll move on to our next step all right moving on to the next step here guys we have our extreme wheel here we're going to assemble so make sure that you have your extreme large wheel shell which is significantly larger than our minis, two of our open builds bearings, and one of our precision shims. So similar to the mini, we're gonna go ahead and add one bearing to the front face of the wheel shell, take a precision shim and put it in between, and then add your last bearing, pop that into place, and you have your wheel assembly. So go ahead and assemble your additional 11 wheels. We're gonna need those for our plate assemblies. So go ahead and get that done guys, and we'll move on to the next step. Alright guys, so on this step we are going to be attaching our anti-backlash nut block to our Y-axis right plate. So go ahead and grab your Y-axis right plate, an anti-backlash nut block, two of our 20mm screws, two of our 3mm aluminum spacers, and two of our silver nylon hex nuts, and our M5 ball driver. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and notice that we have two holes here in the middle for our anti-backlash nut block. So we're going to go ahead and thread our 20 millimeter screws through. Let's go ahead and rotate the plate around. And in addition to that, we're going to go ahead and add our 3 millimeter aluminum spacer on top of both of our 20 millimeter screws. From there, we're going to attach our anti-backlash nut block. As you can see on one side, you have a recessed hole for our hex nut. This will be facing upward towards you. The other side is simply for the screws. So let's go ahead and place this and add your nylon hex nuts. And what I usually do is I just kind of place them into the recessed holes here. And holding the screws in place, I'll rotate this around and tighten it down with our ball driver. And make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want a rotating. You want to make sure that the anti-backlash nut block is straight as well. So if you need to make any adjustments, go ahead and do that. But that looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and move this plate to the side. And we'll move on to our next step. Alright, moving right along here, guys. On this step, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our Y-axis right plate. So we have our assembly that we have thus far. In addition to that, we're going to have four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, six of our centric spacers, seven of our mini V precision shims, 10 of our black nylon hex nuts, two of our large extreme wheels, eight of our mini V extreme wheels, and 10 of our 27 millimeter screws. We're also gonna need our ball driver and permanent marker. So to start this off guys, we're gonna go ahead and take our centric spacers with our permanent marker and we're going to mark this etched 6 millimeter sign on the eccentric. And the purpose of doing so is while we're adjusting our eccentrics to add preload to our rail, we want to make sure to have an indicator to know how much we need to put on or take off. So let's go ahead and mark each one of these eccentrics. All right, perfect. Once you have that finished, I'm going to go ahead and put our permanent marker away. And we're going to take notice to our plate assembly that we have this far. As you can see, we have four holes here at the bottom that are slightly larger than the top. These are going to be for our centric spacers. And they're larger so we can make that adjustment. So we can add preload to the wheels. The top portion here is going to be simply a fixed wheel. So that'll be our aluminum spacer. So let's go ahead and rotate the plate around. As you can see here, the same concept. We're looking for the spacing here on the bottom. We're going to go ahead and add our centrics to this side. So go ahead and feed the screws through. All 
All right, so now that we have those screws in place, we're also going to put two more here on the top. These are going to be for our large extreme wheels. So once again, these are going to be eccentrics. As you can see, the holes are slightly larger than our fixed wheels here. So let's go ahead and put two more of our 27 millimeter screws in place. And then we're going to go ahead and rotate this plate around. All right, now that we have all our screws in place here, we're going to start our stacking configuration. Starting with the bottom for our centrics, go ahead and grab one of your eccentric spacers. Notice that my mark side is going to be facing away from the fixed wheels towards me. So let's go ahead and put those in place. All right, in addition to the eccentrics, we're going to go ahead and add our mini V precision shims. And following the precision shims, we're going to go ahead and add our mini V extreme wheels on top of each screw, followed by our black nylon hex nuts. All right, that looks great. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the top side here for our fixed wheels, starting with our six millimeter aluminum spacer. We go ahead and put those on all the screws here and our mini V precision shims. All right, now that we have our mini V precision shims on, we're going to go ahead and add our mini extreme wheels and our black nylon hex nuts on top and go ahead and thread those into place. All right, now moving up to our top side for our large extreme wheels. I'm going to go ahead and add our eccentrics. Once again, we want the mark side facing away from our fixed wheels, so we're going to face these upward away from us. All right, and our extreme wheels on top, black nylon hex nuts on top. All right, now that we have everything threaded in place here, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down. So let's go ahead and rotate the plate here. Taking your spanner wrench and your M5 ball driver, let's go ahead and tighten all of these down. So now that we have our wheel assembly in place, as you can see, it's really looking great, guys. We're going to go ahead and put this plate to the side for now and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our wheels to our Y-axis left plate. So as you can see here, this is going to be the same process as our previous step. So let's go ahead and get started with our um, eccentric spacers first. Let's go ahead and mark those, and then we'll start our assembly process, guys. All right, once you have those finished up, let's go ahead and start assembling this plate. So now that this assembly is complete, as you can see, it mirrors our opposite plate. Make sure that all your wheels are tight on the assembly, as well as your centrics being adjusted to where our marked end is facing us, as well as the top it should be facing away from us. And this is looking really good, guys. So let's go ahead and put this to the side. 
and we'll move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We're going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our Y-axis left plate. So in this process, we're going to go ahead and grab our assembly, two of our 20 millimeter screws, two of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our silver nylon hex nuts, as well as our anti-backlash nut block. So similar to the last process, we're going to go ahead and insert our two 20 millimeter screws. Go ahead and flip the plate around here. Go ahead and add your three millimeter aluminum spacers as well as your anti-backlash nut block. And then go ahead and put in your nylon hex nuts. And go ahead and slide this to the end of the table here, making sure that our screws are still in place. And we're going to go ahead and fasten that down, guys. All right, perfect. So that looks great, guys. We have our anti-backlash nut block attached to our Y-axis left plate. So now that we have that assembled, we're going to go ahead and put it to the side and move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our X-axis plates with our wheels. So we're going to need two of our X-axis plates here that are going to sandwich together. We're going to need four of our 60 millimeter screws, eight of our already assembled extreme wheels, four of our nine millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, four of our black nylon hex nuts, and eight of our precision shims. In addition to that, of course, we're going to need our ball driver, spanner wrench, and a permanent marker. So to start off, we're going to go ahead and mark our eccentric spacers. Each one should be marked where we have our six millimeter stamp on our eccentric. So go ahead and mark each one of those. All right, perfect. So now that we have those marked, this is going to show us an indication of how much preload we can put onto our x-axis. So it's essential that we have that mark as an indicator because each one of our centrics will rotate in the same direction. So let's go ahead and move on to the assembly. I'm going to go ahead and grab one of our x-axis plates here and we're going to go ahead and feed through our 60 millimeter screws. As you can see, the two holes here on the bottom of the plate are significantly larger. This will be for our eccentrics. The top are for our fixed wheels. So one screw on each corner here. All right, now that you have those in place, go ahead and tilt your plate over and set it to its back. And we can go ahead and start our wheel assembly. So starting with the bottom portion first for our eccentrics, let's go ahead and make sure that our mark side is facing us away from our fixed wheels. Go ahead and slide those onto place and on our additional screw as well. All right, perfect. In addition to this, we're going to go ahead and add our precision shims right on top of the eccentrics. Let's go ahead and do that for both of our screws and add our assembled wheels on top of the precision shims followed by our 9mm aluminum spacer which will be spaced between our two wheels for our dual wheel configuration here so go ahead and add the additional wheels on top followed by our precision shims and our eccentric spacers once again the marked end should be facing you also since we are going to be stacking these plates together you need to make sure that this under lip here is facing upward towards your plate that way it can lock into place and can be adjusted from there all right that looks great guys so let's move on to our fixed wheels so go ahead and grab two of your six millimeter aluminum spacers and place those on top of the screws followed by our precision shims and our assembled wheels next and in addition we're going to have our nine millimeter aluminum spacer on top of the wheel followed by an additional wheel for each screw and of course our precision shims and our six millimeter aluminum spacers on top so now that we have our configuration in place we're going to stack the back x axis plate to our front plate here all right and once you have it seated go ahead and take your black nylon hex nuts we're going to go ahead and thread those into place And let's go ahead and thread all the black hex nuts onto all of our screws. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and tilt this system to the side and let's tighten these screws down, guys. All right, now that we have our assembly in place and all the screws are tightened, as you can see this is looking really good and this is going to be for the X axis. So it's going to flow through like so. We're going to do additional steps to 
assemble this to our z-axis as well but this looks great guys let's go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step alright moving forward here guys on this step we are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our x-axis plate assembly so we're going to need our assembly here along with our anti-backlash nut block two of our 20 millimeter screws two of our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers two of our precision shims and two of our silver nylon hex nuts so to start off guys we're going to go ahead and put in our 20 millimeter screws into our center holes here on the plate from there we're going to slide on our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers in addition to that our precision shims will go on next All right, perfect. So now that we have those on top of our 20 millimeter screws, I'm going to go ahead and place our anti-backlash nut block onto our assembly here. First, we're going to go ahead and put our nylon hex nuts in place here. That way we can fasten it down with a screw. All right, so now that you have those in place, we're going to go ahead and align our nut block with our screws here. All right, now let's go ahead and tighten that down. You should feel your screws catch the, the nylon hex nut. Once it does, work your way to both of the screws. That way you have an even tight lock on both ends of the anti-backlash nut block. Now that that's in place, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. All right, moving forward here, guys. On this step, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our Z gantry system which is using our double wide C-beam gantry plate. We're going to need eight of our already assembled extreme mini wheels, four of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, eight of our mini V precision shims, eight of our black nylon hex nuts, as well as eight of our screws. So to start off guys, we're gonna go ahead and mark our eccentrics where the stamp shows six millimeters on the eccentric spacer. We're going to go ahead and mark that for each one of our eccentrics. These are already pre-marked, so just go along for the additional three and uh, mark each one, making sure that it's completely black so you can recognize your mark. So once you get that finished, we're going to go ahead and start the assembly. Starting with our hole placement here, we need to recognize that our eccentrics are going to go on the right side of this plate. As you can see, the hole spacing is larger. So let's go ahead and insert our 27 millimeter screws. So starting with the top two, down here at the bottom you can see that these are also for the eccentrics and then our fixed wheels are going to be to the left of our eccentrics alright so now that we have our screws in place it's going to flip this plate around and let's go ahead and start our stacking configuration for our wheels starting with our eccentric side first once again we want our marked side facing outward away from our fixed wheels so that's going to be to the left so let's go ahead and insert our eccentrics All right, perfect. So in addition to our centrics, we need to add our mini V precision shims. So let's go ahead and put those on top of the eccentrics. All right, and then after that, we're going to go ahead and put on our mini V wheels. And followed by that, our black nylon hex nuts. All right, perfect. So we have the left side, which is our eccentric side, complete. All we have to do is tighten it down. We're going to move on to our right side here, which we are going to add our aluminum spacers. This will be our fixed side. So make sure that you grab your six millimeter aluminum spacer. We're going to put that on all of our screws here on the right side, followed by our mini V precision shims and our extreme mini wheels. Go ahead and put those on next and go ahead and thread on the black nylon hex nut alright that looks great so let's go ahead and tilt this to the side and make sure to grab your spanner wrench and let's go ahead and tighten down all these screws guys Alright, once you have them all tightened down, it should look like so. As you can see, all our wheels are fastened. This is looking really good, guys. So this is our gantry system for our Z-axis. We're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now and move on to our next step. Alright, so on this next step, guys, we're going to go ahead and assemble our anti-backlash nut block to our 
Z-axis gantry plate. As you can see here, we have our top wheels, which left side is going to be our fixed wheels, right is going to be our eccentric side. And down here at the bottom, we have different uh, settings for your anti-backlash nut block. We're going to use not the bottom holes, but the ones right above it. And we're going to go ahead and insert our 20 millimeter screws here to our anti-backlash nut block. And we're going to adjust our centrics on our 250 rail here for our Z-axis. So we're going to need two of our 20 millimeter screws two of our three millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, two of our silver nylon hex nuts, our anti-backlash nut block, our spanner wrench, and our ball driver. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and put in our screws. Like I said, on this, uh, this bottom section holes here, right above it, we're gonna go ahead and insert our screws. Go ahead and flip that plate around and add your three millimeter aluminum spacers on top with our precision shims followed by our anti-backlash nut block and go ahead and add the nylon hex nuts on top here. So we're going to slide this off holding on to the screws here. We're going to go ahead and tighten down the system. Make sure it's nice and tight and obviously you want this anti-backlash nut block to be as straight as possible here and that's for the purpose of our lead screw that is going to flow through our z-axis. That looks great so we've got that assembled we're going to go ahead and take our 250 C-beam here and run our double wide gantry plate in between the rails. So there shouldn't be any preload on your gantry system yet, but if there is, we can readjust the eccentrics. So mine has a little preload. We're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics counterclockwise. All right, so now that you have your gantry system in the Z-axis, you want to make sure that the preload is appropriate for the wheels. So you shouldn't have any play within the plate. If you do, go ahead and take the plate back out and readjust your eccentrics, moving all of them in the same direction. So I'm going to go ahead and move these clockwise to give me a tighter lock onto the tracks of the C-beam. All right, that feels good. There's no play in my gantry system here. It moves appropriately. This is great. That looks awesome, guys. So now that we have our gantry system into our Z-axis, we're going to go ahead and put this to the side and move on to our next step. All right, guys, moving forward here. On this step, we're going to be attaching our C-beam end mounts to our Z-axis. So we're going to need our Z-axis assembly that we have thus far, which is with our double-wide gantry that's already within the tracks. So we're going to lock that into place with our two C-beam end mounts. We also are going to need our reduction plate for our NEMA 23 and eight of our 25 millimeter screws. So to start this off guys, we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our C-beam end mounts. Noticing that we have recessed holes on one side. This is for the purpose of a flush mount for our screws. So let's go ahead and align that with one end of our C-beam. Go ahead and grab one of your 25 millimeter screws here and thread that in. And let's go ahead and do that with the additional three holes. And then we'll lock those into place with our ball driver. Alright, so I got this started. I'm going to go ahead and fasten them down. Alright, perfect. Look at that. It's a flush mount to the C-beam end mount. That looks really sharp, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to our next side of the C-beam. Now with this, we're gonna have a bit of a different configuration. We're gonna have our C-beam end mount as well as our reduction plate stacked together. So let's make sure that we stand the system up, letting our gantry system fall, and go ahead and stack these plates together. And as you can see on the reduction plate, it matches up with the same holes on the C-beam end mount. So you've got the C configuration here. So let's go ahead and stack that onto our C-beam end mount and thread in a couple screws. All right, so let's go ahead and tighten it down now. All right, make sure that those are tight. And as you can see, this assembly is complete here. So our Z-axis and our gantry system is in between these end mounts and our reduction plate. And this is looking really sharp, guys. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be assembling our T-nuts with our 10 millimeter screws to the back of our X-axis plates. And this will be attaching to our Z-axis. So to start this off, we're gonna need eight of our M5 T-nuts. 
eight of our 10 millimeter screws along with our x-axis assembly to start off we're going to go ahead and check out the back end of the plate as you can see here we have four screws on top and four screws here on the bottom these will be what we're attaching to the easiest way i found to do this is to go ahead and place your 10 millimeter screws into these holes and partially screwing your t-nuts to your 10 millimeter screws so let's go ahead and push our 10 millimeter screws through these holes and then we'll move on and attach our t-nuts all right so now that you have your screws in place let's go ahead and thread the t-nuts so just holding the screw while you start to uh, thread the M5 T-nut, you'll see that you just need to put it on partially. That way we can slide it in the track of the 250 C-beam. So let's go ahead and do that with all the additional screws. Alright, so now we have our M5 T-nuts threaded to our 10 millimeter screws here. We're going to go ahead and move this assembly to the side for now and move on to our next step. Alright, moving on to the next step here guys. We're going to need our Z-axis assembly that we have thus far along with our X-axis assembly with our T-nuts attached to our 10 millimeter screws. Now to start this off, we're going to go ahead and take one of our C-beam end mounts out in order to slide this assembly into place. So let's go ahead and unscrew this end mount from our Z axis which is fine it's not going to affect anything as long as your gantry doesn't move out of the 250 C beam which it won't unless you actually move it out then it's it's really not a big deal we're just going to go ahead and take this off and then reassemble it once we have our X axis assembly in place like I said having these T nuts attached to the 10 millimeter screws helps out significantly basically we're going to line the T nuts and then slide them into these tracks and tighten it down from there. It just works so much better. So once you have all these screws out of the C-beam end mount, we'll go ahead and take our X assembly, our X axis assembly, and prepare it to mount to our Z axis. All right, so now that we have that off, let's go ahead and take our X axis plate assembly, adjusting our T-nuts accordingly, and we also want to make sure that this is going to sit upright. So this is the position that you want with the open builds label here on the bottom. So we're going to go ahead and align these T-nuts. And go ahead and slide those in place. Now these top holes here you can access with your ball driver. So if you need to adjust your T-nuts, this is the place to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and make this adjustment. So once you have the top row of M5 T-nuts in place here, you're going to go ahead and slide it upward, making the adjustments to our bottom T-nuts so they also slide through the track. Alright, so now that you have the bottom T-nuts aligned here, they should slide into the track, like so. Now we can go ahead and attach our C-beam end mount back to the end of the 250 C-beam. So let's go ahead and reattach our C-beam end mount. Alright, now that you have your C-beam end mount attached to your Z-axis here, we're going to go ahead and slide our x-axis assembly here down the z-axis and you want to align it with your c-beam end mount so make sure that it's flush and then we're going to go ahead and tighten down our 10 millimeter screws in here so use these access holes here to tighten down the screws and let's go ahead and tighten down all those screws guys So now our Z-axis assembly is, is looking great guys. As you can see, this is where the X-axis will run through. And then your Z-axis obviously will be running up and down vertically. But that looks great guys. So let's go ahead and set this to the side. And we'll move on to our next step. Alright guys, moving forward here to the next step. As you can see, we have our base assembly. 
as well as our two y-axis assemblies. We need both of these in order to adjust our eccentrics and add preload to our y-axis. So we're going to go ahead and take one of our assemblies here and run it through the track. As you can see, this is stiff. It's not going to be able to run through the C-beam. So I'm going to have to adjust my eccentrics accordingly. All right, let's give that a shot. All right. So that's actually a little loose, but it's in our track now. So that's a good sign. We're going to go ahead and take a little off going counterclockwise. All right, that feels much better. So as you can see, my y-axis plate is flowing freely through the y-axis here. And it's also tight, rigid. The wheels are completely in the track and there's enough preload. So my additional adjustment is going to be to the top wheels here, which also have eccentrics. As you can see, each one is loose. It's not even touching the rail. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics. And that looks great guys. So let's go ahead and rotate our machine around and we'll add our additional plate. Alright, so once again we're going to go ahead and see if it'll fit in the C-beam. It won't, so we're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics. Once again we're going to go ahead and rotate these counterclockwise. Alright, so now we have them in the track here. The mini V-wheels are actually in good shape. That's the perfect amount of preload. So I lucked out with that one. If you need to make additional adjustments, go ahead and take it out of the track and uh, make the adjustments. But uh, these wheels are in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and adjust our large extreme wheels here on top. As you can see, they are loose. So we're going to go ahead and rotate these to the right until they snug against the rail. All right, that's perfect. All right, it's looking good, guys. So we've got our Y-axis plates in place. We're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. We are going to be attaching our NEMA 23 motor to our reduction plate on our Z-axis. So we're gonna need our Z-axis assembly as well as our two timing pulleys. One of them is a clamp bore for our lead screw and our other is the GT320 tooth and these will work in unison to create a reduction system for our motor. So in addition to that we're going to need our closed loop timing belt, four of our screws, four of our black nylon hex nuts, as well as our NEMA 23 motor here, our M5 ball driver, and spanner wrench. Alright so to get started here guys we're going to go ahead and rotate this assembly and take a look at the reduction plate. These four holes here are slotted are slotted like this for a particular reason one of them being to add tension to our loop timing belt so we're gonna go ahead and place our motor in there but we're gonna adjust it later on so I'll show you that as we get into this step So go ahead and grab your NEMA 23 motor and we're gonna place it underneath this assembly alright so now that we have it in place go ahead and run your screws through the openings on the motor all right, we're going to take our black nylon hex nuts and we're going to start threading through these screws. That way we can tighten them down and we don't have to worry about the screws falling out. All right, so we got one. Let's go ahead and do the rest of them, guys. All right, so now that we have our motor in place here, we're gonna go ahead and uh, tighten these down. So go ahead and tighten that down. Not completely, because we still wanna make that adjustment. Like I said, we want tension on our closed loop timing belt. So let's go along the additional three screws here. All right, so now that we have that tight, let's go ahead and shift it. We want to shift it back to allow tension to be built up between our pulleys. 
If it's too tight right now with the screws, go ahead and loosen the bolts. So as you can see, the distance from the back of the plate to the front here, you want to shift it back. That way we can create that tension that we need. So that looks perfect. Now let's go ahead and tighten those screws down. And if you do need to make more adjustments, you can. All you have to do is loosen up the, the hex nut and you can shift that around. So we have that in place. Let's go ahead and attach our pulleys. So we have our GT3 20 tooth. That's going to attach to our motor shaft. So let's go ahead and rotate our motor shaft to the flat side. Alright, so now that we have the flat side of the motor shaft exposed, we're going to slide our timing pulley into place. If you need to loosen your set screws, go ahead and do so with your ball driver set. So this one here is going to attach to our lead screw. So the heights should match. And we'll get to that once we attach our lead screw to our Z-axis. But just to give you a heads up. Alright, so we're going to continue to tighten down these set screws. Make sure they're nice and snug on our motor shaft. So now we can take our clamp pulley and our timing belt and set that to the side with our, our Z-axis assembly. And let's go ahead and move on to the next step, guys. Alright guys, moving on to the next step here. We are going to be assembling our lead screw to our Z-axis. In this step, we're going to need our Z-axis assembly that we have thus far. We're going to need our GT3 timing pulley, the clamp bore that is going to attach to our lead screw, our closed loop timing belt, two of our 8mm shims, two of our 8mm lock collars, two of our flange bearings, our 250 lead screw with our ball driver set and our spanner wrench. So let's go ahead and get started here guys. I'm going to go ahead and feed our lead screw through, adding our flange bearing, 8mm shim, our lock collar, and we're going to go ahead and feed this through our anti-backlash nut block. So just rotate the screw to the right and you'll feel the threads catch. And just go ahead and feed that through because we're going to need to do the same stacking configuration on the other side of the lead screw. So keep these parts down close to this side of the C-beam end mount. And as you can see, our lead screw is protruding through. We're going to go ahead and stack on our lock collar, 8mm shim, and our flange bearing. Continue to rotate our lead screw through. So now we're going to go ahead and lock in our flange bearing to our C-beam end mount. Making sure that our lead screw is flush with our C-beam end mount, we're going to go ahead and tighten down our lock collar. Make sure it's nice and snug. We don't want any movement in this lead screw whatsoever. Alright, perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to our opposite end. Once again, we're going to go ahead and push our flange bearing into our C-beam end mount. Making sure it's tight against the C-beam end mount, we're going to go ahead and tighten down that lock collar. Alright, that's perfect guys. So let's go ahead and take our GT3 timing pulley and let's go ahead and attach that to our lead screw. You want to make sure that you have a little room between your reduction plate and the pulley. We don't want this rubbing against the plate. So let's go ahead and tighten that down. That looks good. Now let's check the height of each pulley, making sure that the heights are correct and matching. That way we don't have any rub on our timing pulley. All right, as you can see, the height of my back timing pulley is not identical to the front, so we're going to go ahead and make that adjustment. All right, that looks good. We're going to go ahead and attach our timing belt. Now, once again, you want tension, but you don't want too much tension. And as you can see, there's too much tension on the spacing between the motor and the timing pulleys. So we're going to go ahead and make that adjustment. Go ahead and take your spanner wrench and loosen up these hex nuts. And that way we can move this motor in closer and it won't put any stress on the motor shaft. Go ahead and attach your closed loop timing belt. Pull back your motor and you want enough tension to where you can't pinch it together and touch each end of the belt. As you can see that's enough resistance there. So we're going to go ahead and lock that into place. Basically you want to push out the motor while you're tightening down to make sure that the resistance is still there and you still have tension on your belt. 
So once you lock one into place, it should be easier to uh, latch on to the other screws. So let's go ahead and tighten down all the screws once again. Now that is our reduction system. As you can see, this is starting to look really good, guys. This is our Z-axis. So this is a complete actuator with our gantry system in place and our lead screw. This is looking really sharp, guys. Let's go ahead and put this to the side, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, moving forward to the next step here, guys. We are going to assemble our X-axis to our Y-axis. So as you can see, we have both of our Y-axis plates in position. We're going to need our Z-axis assembly, eight of our 15 millimeter screws, our 500 millimeter C-beam, and our ball driver. So to start off with this assembly, we're going to go ahead and take our 500 millimeter C-beam here and check the placement in between our Y-axis plates. As you can see, it's a nice fit. There's no adjustments that have to be made to our Centrix or in squaring in our C-beam here, which is on our Y-axis. Everything should be in place. You shouldn't have anything cockeyed. We don't have our end plates on the ends of each corner of the machine. Until we do so, we want to be very careful on how we make this adjustment to our x-axis. So let's go ahead and pull that back out. And let's go ahead and slide in our z-axis and our x-axis assembly here. And we're also going to have to adjust the eccentrics. So go ahead and make the adjustments to your eccentrics here. Go ahead and rotate them to the right. Alright, and let's give that a shot. See how it rides onto the rail. All right, still a little bit too much tension, so continue to make that adjustment on the eccentrics. So now that you have your adjustments made to your eccentrics, your rail should slide through, and you should have enough tension on each wheel, and that looks really nice. All right, so now that we have that in place, we're going to go ahead and rotate our assembly to the right here. Run these rails in between, so we want the x-axis in between each y-axis plate. Alright, so once we have the x-axis in place here between our y-axis plates, we're going to go ahead and insert our 15 millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and grab one. We're just going to thread this in. Adjust your x-axis so you can find the position. And we're just going to thread that in to kind of hold it in place. Alright, so go ahead and thread in all your screws for this side. And then we're going to rotate our machine and do the opposite side. Alright, so go ahead and grab your ball driver. We're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Alright, once you have uh, this Y axis plate attached to our X axis, we're going to go ahead and rotate this around. Alright, once again, we're going to go ahead and thread in one of our 15 millimeter screws. Let's go ahead and align your C beam to fit one of these holes and thread the screw in. All right, and then we're gonna do that with the additional three. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, and let's go ahead and tighten it down with our ball driver. That looks great, guys. So we got both of our Y-axis plates attached to our X-axis. Let's go ahead and turn our machine 90 degrees. So we can take a look at this bad boy. It's looking awesome, guys. Really excited. We're going to go ahead and move on to our next step. All right, moving on to the next step here, guys. As you can see, our machine is coming along nicely. We are going to be assembling our NEMA 23 to our X-axis along with our lead screw. So in this step, we're going to need our NEMA 23 motor, four of our 60 millimeter screws, four of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our 9mm aluminum spacers, two of our flange bearings, two of our 8mm shims, two of our 8mm lock collars, and our flexible coupling. In addition to that, we're going to need our 500mm lead screw, we're going to need our ball driver set, and spanner wrench. So let's go ahead and get started here, guys. First things first, we're going to rotate our machine 90 degrees. So we want to attach our motor to the right side of our machine. The main purpose of doing so is so you have a working space to the left of your machine. You can put your laptop or any device that you're using to control your machine. Alright, so now that we have it turned, let's go ahead and grab our NEMA 23 motor, one of our 60 millimeter screws. Go ahead and thread the 60 millimeter screw through the motor. 
and let's attach our 40 millimeter aluminum spacer as well as a 9 millimeter aluminum spacer and from there you can see the four holes here on our y-axis plate we're going to attach it in our top right corner just to kind of hold the motor in place and then we'll fasten down the rest of the screws so let's go ahead and get that done guys alright once you have that semi tight you don't want to completely tighten it down because we want to get the rest of our aluminum spacers with our 60 millimeter screws in place so keep it kind of loose and let's go ahead and attach our other screws so once again it'll be a 40 millimeter aluminum spacer and then our 9 millimeter aluminum spacer right after and like I said don't tighten it down completely we just want to hold it there so let's go ahead and finish up the bottom two Alright, so now you can go ahead and tighten down each screw onto the Y-axis plate. Make sure they're nice and snug. We don't want this motor moving around. Alright, now that you have each one of these screws tight, we're going to go ahead and put on our flexible coupling. So, first things first, we want to take notice to our motor shaft here. It does have a flat side. This is for the purpose of attaching our flexible coupling. We have set screws in the flexible coupling that will mount to this flat side of the shaft here. So we're going to make sure to align our set screws with uh, this flat side. And once we do so, we're going to tighten that down to the shaft. Before we do that though, I want to show you that each side of the flexible coupling has a different circumference. So we have a quarter inch for our motor shaft. On the opposite end, we have a larger circumference, which will be for our lead screw. So make sure that this is facing outward towards the lead screw, and you have the smaller end facing towards your motor shaft. So let's go ahead and place that. Go ahead and grab your ball driver, and let's tighten that down. All right. Now rotate your flexible coupling here. As you can see, you have another adjustment. We're going to go ahead and tighten that down as well. All right, perfect. So now that we have our motor mounted, we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine 180 degrees. So now that our machine is rotated, we're going to place our lead screw. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and insert the lead screw through this axis hole on the Y-axis plate. We're going to add additional parts to that as well. Our flange bearing being the first, followed by our 8mm shim. And last but not least, our lock collar. So go ahead and slide that into place. All right. Now we're going to feed the lead screw through, contacting our anti-backlash nut block within our x-axis configuration with our plates. So go ahead and rotate the screw to the right. We're going to thread into the anti-backlash nut block, keeping these parts down here at this end because they're going to mount to our y-axis left plate. So just go ahead and thread that through. Now once you see the lead screw protruding through, we're going to go ahead and add some additional parts to this side as well, which is our flange bearing, 8mm shim, and lock collar. On the side starting with the lock collar first, our 8mm shim, and our flange bearing, with this inside lip facing towards the other plate. The reason being is this will lock into place and keep the lead screw still, so let's go ahead and place that onto the lead screw and continue threading through your anti-backlash nut block. We're going to thread until we reach our flexible coupling. Once again, keeping these parts in place. So now as you can see, our parts here at the end aren't completely flush against the plate. So we're going to go ahead and push them into place until the flange bearing locks in. And keep rotating your screw until you reach the flexible coupling. I'm going to rotate the machine so we can see how far we need to go. Alright, so we have our lead screw all the way through. As you can see, it's flush here against the plate. We don't want it sticking out. So if you need to make adjustments to your flexible coupling, you can to push it back further against the motor shaft. But in this case, we're perfect. It's going to go ahead and lock in our parts here on both sides. Alright, now pushing against the 8mm shim and the flange bearing, you're going to tighten down your lock collar. 
and this is going to keep your lead screw from moving back and forth. We don't want any backlash in our system, so make sure that you get it tight. And sometimes the lock collar will pop loose. As you can see, the pitch of our threads here on the lead screw, sometimes it doesn't align with the set screw on our lock collar. So if you need to, you can actually rotate the lock collar to find a better placement. So you can do that if need be. Ours locked onto the lead screw perfect. All right, so now that we have our lead screw in place, let's go ahead and make our adjustments to our flexible coupling here. We're going to tighten it down to our lead screw. All right, make sure to get that nice and tight. We don't want to break them loose. And as you can see now, we have rotation in our system. So you can actually move your X gantry. Let's go ahead and rotate the machine to the front. Go ahead and see the progress that we've got done so far. It's looking really sharp, guys. All right, so now we have our motor in place on the X axis. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, guys, moving forward to our next step here. We're going to be attaching our end plates. So we're going to need two of our end plates that are at this design here which are not for our motor mounting configuration and two of our opposite plates which will be for our motor mounting configuration as you can see we have threaded holes here for each of our motors to be mounted to on the y-axis so we're going to need those plates as well as 16 of our 15 millimeter screws we're going to need 16 of our 12 millimeter screws and 16 of our M5 T-nuts along with our ball driver. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and face the front of the machine. And right here we have a slot open on our 20 by 60 rail here part of our base assembly. We're going to slide our T-nuts in, into place and start our mounting process with our end plates. So go ahead and feed your T-nuts through this track. We're going to have a total of eight. So be four on one side, four on the opposite side. So we're going to go ahead and slide in four here. And then we'll move to our left side here and feed in another four. So let's go ahead and do that, guys. All right, perfect. So now that we have our T-nuts in place, so now the front of the machine is going to use the plates that are not part of our motor mounting configuration. So we're going to go ahead and use those first here since we're at the front of the machine. As you can see, our Z-axis is facing us. So go ahead and attach one of these to the C-beam. We're going to use our 15 millimeter screws. So we're going to go ahead and thread those into place first. All right, so now that we have those threaded in, we're going to go ahead and place our 12 millimeter screws into the slots here with our T-nuts, making sure that our system is square. So we want to make sure that our C-beam is flush against our 20 by 60 rail here. So I'm going to push gently while I tighten down this end plate making sure that I have a flush mount here and I'm going to tighten that down all the way to make sure that we hold this position alright so we're going to go ahead and tighten down our 15 millimeter screws to our C-beam so let's go ahead and get that done alright now that we have those tightened down onto our C-beam we're going to go ahead and use our 12 millimeter screw and finish up our bottom here to tighten these down to the T-nuts. Alright, so let's move on to our next plate. So once again, we're going to go ahead and start with our 15 millimeter screws and thread these into the C-beam. All right, perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our 12 millimeter screw with our ball driver. And we're going to do the same thing we did on the other side, making sure that we have a flush mount here with our C-beam to our 20 by 60. Just so going to go ahead and push our screw in and make the adjustment by pushing the C-beam forward and then fastening that down. Perfect. That looks great. We've got a flush mount here. So now we're going to go ahead and tighten down our C-beam with the 15 millimeter screws. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and adjust our T-nuts so we can tighten down our 12 millimeter screws to this end plate. Like I said, one of the best ways to use your ball driver is to go ahead on this uh, opposite side here and push through the track. And then you can use these holes here too to shift the T-nuts. 
So once you have your T-nuts in place here, we're going to go ahead and use our 12 millimeter screws and tighten down this end plate. So let's go ahead and do that real quick guys. Alright, perfect. So now that those are nice and tight, we're going to go ahead and rotate this machine 180 degrees and do our opposite end plates, which will have our motors attached to them. Once you have your machine rotated, once again we're going to notice the back end of the machine here. We want to align our end plates correctly, so as we are fastening them to the machine, we're going to make sure to push the C-beam over to flush mount to our 20 by 60 rail here. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and grab one of your end plates. This should have the threaded holes here for our motor mounting configuration. And make sure that we align it with our C-beam. It's going to do the right side first here. Alright, so that's how it's going to be seated. We're going to need our T-nuts in place for our bottom four holes here on the end plate. So let's go ahead and add our T-nuts, four on each side. Alright, four more on our left side. Alright, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and adjust our T-nuts so we can uh, mount them correctly into our end plate. So I'm just going to use my end plate as a reference point, get an idea for the spacing. So we're going to start on the right side here, grabbing your end plate. Let's go ahead and grab a 15 millimeter screw and thread this into our C-beam. And we're going to do that with our additional three holes. Let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, so now that we have our 15 millimeter screws in place, we're going to go ahead and align our C-beam with our 20 by 60 here on the base. Grab a 12 millimeter screw, and we're going to lock this T-nut into place here on our end plate. All right, make sure that's nice and tight. As you can see, our 20 by 60 is flush with our C-beam. It's perfect. So let's go ahead and fasten down our 15 millimeter screws here to our C-beam. All right, that looks great. That's tied against our C-beam. Now let's go ahead and adjust our T-nuts and we will go ahead and lock this into place with our 12 millimeter screws. All right, now we're going to repeat the same process to our left side here on the back end of the machine. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. It's really starting to come together guys. On our next step we're going to go ahead and mount our motors as well as adding our lead screws. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step guys. Alright guys moving on to the next step here we are going to be mounting our NEMA 23 motors to both of our Y axis. We've got two of our NEMA 23 motors as well as our lead screws that we are going to attach on the step as well. In this step we're going to need eight of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers two of our flexible couplers, four of our flange bearings, four of our 8mm shims, four of our 8mm lock collars, eight of our 9mm aluminum spacers, eight of our 60mm screws, and our ball driver set. So let's go ahead and get started here guys. We're going to mount our motors first and then we're going to move into our lead screws. So to start off, go ahead and grab your NEMA 23 motor, a 60 millimeter screw, one of your 40 millimeter aluminum spacers. I'm going to go ahead and slide it on like so, and our 9 millimeter aluminum spacer. So we're going to align this to our top right hole here for our motor mounting configuration. So go ahead and align that, and let's go ahead and fasten that down. You don't want to tighten it down completely, because we're going to get the rest of our screws in place, just enough to where it's not going to fall off. Alright, so go ahead and grab another one of your 60 millimeter screws, 
slide it into place here, and then a 9mm aluminum spacer. And once again, we're going to tighten that down just a little bit, not completely. I want to make sure to have access to our other two holes here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that for our bottom two. All right, and then our very last one here, guys. Like I said, make sure not to tighten it down completely because it makes it extremely difficult to get your aluminum spacers in place. Just keep them loose for now, and we're going to tighten those down in just a minute. All right, so this last one, go ahead and tighten down. And let's go ahead and tighten the rest of these guys. All right, perfect. That's on there tight. Looks great. We're going to move on to our motor shaft. Like we did in previous steps, we're going to locate that flat end so we can mount our flexible coupling to the shaft. So go ahead and grab your flexible coupling here. Make sure that your set screws are aligned with the flat end of the shaft here on the motor. Go ahead and grab your ball driver. And let's tighten that down. Go ahead and rotate. As you can see, there is additional screw here. We're going to go ahead and tighten that down as well. Now just to the motor shaft, we're not going to tighten the others down yet because we haven't got our lead screws in place. All right, that looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our left side. Same exact process. So let's go ahead and get it done. Alright, perfect. So now that we have both of our motors mounted, we're going to go ahead and move on to our lead screw. So let's go ahead and rotate this machine 180 degrees. And grab one of your 540 millimeter lead screws here. And go ahead and feed it through one of our end plates. Adding our additional parts, starting with the flange bearing, followed by our 8 millimeter shim. And our lock collar. We're going to go ahead and slide that through until we meet our anti-backlash nut block. Once we do, we're going to turn to the right with our lead screw and thread that through, just like so. Making sure your parts here stay down towards this end plate. And that's for locking the lead screw in place. So we're going to keep feeding it through until we see the lead screw. As you can see here, I see the tip of the lead screw. We're going to go ahead and Add our additional parts starting with our lock collar, 8mm shim, and our flange bearing. Go ahead and feed that all the way through to our flexible coupling here. Once again, keep these parts down by this end plate. So now we have our flexible coupling into our lead screw. We're going to go ahead and push our parts down here to the end plate making sure that our lock collar is pressing against it tightly. We're going to lock that down into place. Make sure it's nice and tight. We don't want any movement in our lead screw. All right, so now let's go ahead and move up to the front. As you can see, once again, we want this nice and tight against our 8mm shim and flange bearing. Tighten that down. Perfect. So now move on to your flexible coupling here. We're going to go ahead and Tighten that down to the lead screw. All right, now that that's nice and tight, as you can see, we have movement. That's exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and move on to our opposite side. And we're going to do the same exact process, guys. So let's go ahead and get that done. All right, now that we see that our lead screw is protruding through, we're going to add those additional parts and finish this up, guys.
So now we're going to go ahead and rotate our machine to the front here. As you can see, everything is aligned perfectly. This whole design was built with perfection. We got our motors in the back here. So all of our wires are going to be in unison away from the machine. So you have a nice workspace here to your left. This machine's super solid. It's looking great so far, guys. So let's go ahead and move on to our next step. Alright guys, so on this step we're going to be attaching our router spindle mount to our Z-axis. So let's go ahead and take our two black angle corner connectors. We're also going to need four of our 8mm screws. First off, we're going to go ahead and mount our black angle corner connectors to our router spindle here. Just makes for an easier assembly. So go ahead and start with your 8mm screw and your black angle corner connector here. We're going to go ahead and attach it to the second, the second hole here, so closest to the end of the router spindle is where we're going to be attaching. So go ahead and fasten that into place. Alright, now go ahead and take your other black angle corner connector here and let's fasten this into place. Alright, perfect. So your router spindle should look like this with your black angle corner connectors on top here. Let's go ahead and grab your 8mm screw and find our placement on our double wide gantry here. So as you can see we have two threaded holes on each side of our double gantry. So we want to attach our black angle corner connectors there. This placement is important for our depth configuration here on this machine so make sure that you have them in that placement. So we're going to go ahead and fasten one down and we'll work on our second next. So that one's good. Go ahead and grab your 8mm screw and tighten down your additional black angle corner connector here guys. You want to make sure that the system is square as well, so go ahead and adjust it if you need to before you tighten it down. Obviously you can make adjustments later on if it's still not square, but that looks great guys. Perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, moving on to the next step here guys, we're going to need 12 of our end caps as well as 12 of our self-tapping screws. And this assembly will take place on each one of our 20 by 60 rails here for our base assembly. So to go ahead and get started here guys, we're going to need our parts that I just mentioned as well as a power drill. So let's go ahead and get started on this side and work our way around the machine. So by simply hanging this over the edge of the table, it gives me access to move my self-tapping screw back and forth. So I'll show you what I mean. Go ahead and grab your self-tapping screw here. As you can see, the slot hole here in the 20 by 60 fits rather well. We're going to go ahead and put some pressure on our machine here and run it back and forth. Just like that to get the hole started. Go ahead and grab one of your end caps. As you can see we have a recessed hole here. We're going to use that end for our self-tapping screw so it fits flush. Look at that. That looks perfect. So let's go ahead and attach that to our 20 by 60 rail. Alright, very nice. So you want to make sure that it's square. You can make adjustments with your your drill if you want to loosen it. Make sure that it is completely square. That looks great. I'm going to go ahead and move on to our additional three. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. Alright, perfect. So that's one side done. Let's go ahead and move around the machine and complete all of our end caps. Alright, now that we have those complete guys, go ahead and spin your machine around to the face, to the front of your machine here. And let's just step back and appreciate what we have so far. This is looking really good guys. Let's go ahead and move on to our next step. Alright guys, so on this step we are going to be mounting our spoiler board to our Sphinx. So we're going to need 12 of our self-tapping screws, our power drill, and we're going to need the 
rotate this machine 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so now we're going to stand this machine upward. That way we can access the bottom of it, and we're going to drill in our self-tapping screws from there. So let's go ahead and lift it up slowly onto one side of the machine. Just like so. Since you have your spoiler board pre-cut, it fits perfectly and it'll stay in place. So let's go ahead and start drilling in our self-tapping screws here. Starting with the first one, I'm going to show you how this works best. Basically, I clamp onto my spoiler board, accessing my first single L bracket, and I slowly drill in the self-tapping screw. Alright, just like that. So we're going to go ahead and do that same process for our additional brackets. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, that looks great, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and gently bring back our machine to its foundation. The machine's relatively light, so just slowly drop it down. We'll go ahead and rotate it to the forward position of the machine. So as you can see, that spoiler board fit perfectly on there. This mounting configuration works really well. As you can see, you don't have to recess the holes here on top, so it's very aesthetically pleasing, and that looks great, guys. So that completes our mechanical portion of this build. Great job.